Hey what's up everyone, City and Technology News here, and today I've actually got a pretty interesting tutorial for you. I'm going to be walking you through how to get Cortana, which is Microsoft's virtual assistant, on your Android device. So you're not going to find Cortana in the Google Play Store, and you will have to download it from a third party source, but it is actually compatible with all Android devices, and it's a relatively straightforward process getting it on your phone or tablet. So the first thing you need to do is enable your device for installation from a third party source, and to do this all you need to do is go to settings, then go to security, and then scroll down until you see the enable unknown sources option. Tap on that, agree to Google's little disclaimer, and then you're actually ready to begin the installation process. So your next step is going to be to open Chrome and then paste in the link for the Cortana download file which I provided in the description below. Your phone is then going to open up a page in Google Drive and all you need to do is select the download option and then tap open in Chrome. The Cortana installer just takes a couple seconds to download and when it's done all you need to do is tap on it in the notifications panel and then select package installer for the app you want to open it with. At this point, your phone should open the first installation page for Cortana where you can read through all the features that Cortana offers and then also see the permissions that the app requires. If you're okay with everything that Microsoft is saying, go ahead and scroll to the bottom and then hit install. Now once your phone says that the Cortana application has finished installing, you're ready to open the app and begin setting it up for use. So when you first hit open, Cortana starts by introducing herself, and then after that you can actually read through a couple things you can ask Cortana in the future. When you're done reading this first page, go ahead and hit next, and then you have the option to select a name you'd like Cortana to call you in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and enter in Jonathan since that's my name in case you didn't already know, and this is the name that Cortana is actually going to address me by as I said in the future. So once you've done that, you actually need to do the last step, which is signing into a Microsoft account. If you've used a Windows computer before, or if you've actually ever downloaded something from say the Windows Store or the Windows Phone Store, you'll already have one of these, but just go ahead and enter in your email and your password and you'll be already to use Cortana on your Android device. So now that Cortana is actually up and running on my phone, I'm just going to go ahead and ask it a couple questions so you can get an idea of what it's capable of. What's the time? What's the weather right now? Add surfing at the beach to my calendar for Saturday. Wake me up in 20 minutes. So as you can see, Cortana actually does work pretty well on my Android phone, and the integration is pretty good for a third-party virtual assistant. The only slightly annoying thing is that you have to manually start the Cortana app every time you want to use it, but I guess this is the trade-off you should be willing to make if you do want Cortana on your Android device. But let me know how you think Cortana compares to Google now in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you did find it helpful, and I will see you next time.